the benefit of creatine isn't just that you get to load your muscle with an energy source. You actually get to condition your muscle to be able to resynthesize and use creatine naturally that much better. So creatine has a dual purpose. It's a pretty miraculous compound, to be completely honest. Just so much of us get steered in the wrong direction with how much to take. So what is the proper dosing strategy for creatine? Hey, do make sure you hit that red subscribe button and then please do hit that bell icon that's down there in the corner so you can turn on notifications and never miss a daily beat on this channel. And then after this video, I highly recommend you check out Chomps sticks down below. Chomps has beef sticks, venison sticks, my personal favorite, turkey sticks, all grass fed, grass finished, good quality stuff with no GMOs, no nasty stuff, no icky stuff, just good, clean quality snacks for the road. So highly recommend special link, special pricing down below in the description for those of you that watch my channel. All right, now let's get into this. So I wish I could jump straight into what the proper dosing is, but I do have to help you understand a little bit more of the physiology, the biochemistry. Now, realistically, if you want to skip to the end of this video, you could just get the flat out dosing strategy. But I honestly think that understanding the fundamentals of this is going to help you make a true decision, but it's also going to teach a man to fish, so to speak, rather than just giving you the information. You should really learn this stuff. It's very important. It's good to know. So here's what it looks like. When you sprint or when you go through some kind of high intensity activity, you burn through your energy stores, your ATP in one to two seconds. It's gone fast. And then right after that, you burn through your creatine phosphate stores. And that is sort of your secondary means of creating energy. It's a chemical reaction using creatine stored in your muscles to create energy. But you burn through that in about seven to eight seconds. So that's done. Well, then what happens is really interesting, okay? After you burn through your creatine stores, you have your rest period and you're trying to wait for creatine to restore. Well, what ends up happening is because you don't have any energy left, any ATP, your body has to create energy, has to create ATP from what's uh, from oxygen, from something called oxidative phosphorylation. Now, I'm making a point here, so stick with me, okay? This ATP that's created from oxygen during our rest period then crosses through the membrane of what is called the mitochondria. The mitochondria is the energy powerhouse inside of our cell. So this ATP crosses through the mitochondrial membrane and it transphorylates or combines with something called creatine kinase. Creatine kinase is a specific enzyme that helps form creatine, okay? So it takes energy to create energy, in other words. So what I'm getting at here is this process of synthesizing and creating creatine is just as important as the creatine itself. Now, here's what's cool. Supplementing with creatine does not just give you infinite amounts of creatine to use for energy. I mean, it does help you with that. But one of the coolest things is this whole creatine kinase creating creatine process I just talked about is massively improved when we supplement. Because speaking of teach a man to fish, you're basically teaching your cells to be able to synthesize and create creatine better by supplementing a little bit. So not only do you give yourself creatine to use, but you help your body get used to creating and using creatine, which therefore makes you a stronger, faster individual. So now we ask the question, how do we determine how much to take? And I have to go a couple different directions to really get to the point here, but we have to look at the fact that 95% of our creatine is in our muscles. And a large portion of that is stored in type two fast twitch muscle fiber types. So the short answer is, if you have more fast twitch muscle, you can hold more creatine, which would mean that you can get away with supplementing more and get a larger result. But it doesn't end there because there's other pieces that we look at. For example, there's a 2001 study that took a look at injured people, okay? People that had to be immobilized. Now, normally when people are immobilized, they have a massive reduction in what is called a GLUT4 transporter, which normally transfers glucose into the cell. Well, obviously, if they're not moving a limb, they don't need to be getting as much glucose into the cell because they're not moving it. They don't need the energy. However, that usually results in, well, poor muscle function. They found that if subjects took 20 grams of creatine per day, even if they weren't athletes, if they took 20 grams of creatine per day, it stopped that GLUT4 decline. 
meaning the muscle was able to restore a lot of its function even when immobilized. My point in saying that is you don't have to be some crazy athlete to get a benefit from creatine or to take a good amount of it. Anyhow, I'm going to continue on with another one that still kind of makes a solid point with everything I'm talking about here. The study that was published in the Journal of Applied Physiology in 2010, and it found that giving subjects 20 grams of creatine for five days prior to an intense endurance event, in this case, an Ironman uh, triathlon, there were significantly less biomarkers after the race of uh, muscle breakdown. So there was less creatine kinase measured. There was less lactate dehydrogenase. If you're a biochem nerd, you know what that is. But basically what it means is taking creatine for five days prior to an endurance event, people that don't even have a lot of fast twitch muscle fibers, they got a huge benefit from a recovery standpoint. Okay, they might not be able to store as much, which might be why they had to supplement a little bit more. We may never know, but anyhow, we keep going. Typically, a person can hold about 110 to 120 millimoles of creatine per kilogram of muscle weight. I don't expect you to know how much muscle weight you have, and I don't expect you to know this perfect number for yourself. But what's interesting is that as someone supplements with creatine, that capacity increases. They then have a capacity of holding between 130 and 160 millimoles per kilogram of body weight. That's pretty cool. So just by supplementing creatine, we improve how much we can hold. The typical loading strategy is to take about five grams of creatine four times per day for about five or six days. And then after that, to take about three to five grams of creatine daily just to maintain. But it begs the question, is this just created by supplement companies to get us to take a lot more creatine? And a lot of people think that, and there's a lot of merit to thinking that too, because they probably are out to get your money. But there is some merit to the actual science behind loading too. So now we get right to the meat of it, the total numbers, okay? The kind of table that I put together based on the research and based on some of the stuff I've explained in the different pieces is that if you are a resistance trained person, there's a good chance that you've at least developed some more fast twitch or type 2A muscle fiber types, but no guarantee, but we can kind of lean into that. Or if you're someone that is more of an explosive athlete, maybe you played football or you sprinted, you're someone that would probably benefit from taking 20 grams per day of creatine for five days, followed by three grams daily after that, all the way up to five grams if you're really doing a lot of heavy, heavy lifting. I think five grams per day is overkill. I think that three grams per day is perfect after that 20 gram per day loading phase. Okay. The next one is if you are an endurance athlete, I still think you should have a loading phase, but I think your loading phase should be more along the lines of 10 grams per day for five to seven days, just so you get your body a little bit more used to it. And then you wean down to a three gram per day maintenance phase as well. Okay. And then if you are someone that is not resistance trained, you're a beginner and you're wanting to just get a little bit more strength to get yourself motivated in the gym, then you're probably best off not even doing a loading phase altogether, calculating your total kilograms of body weight and doing about 0.3 grams of creatine per kilogram of body weight. Okay. Simple math saying it again. Okay. 0.3 grams of creatine per kilogram of body weight. That's a great way to just get started and just keep a maintenance level going. Now, lastly, if you're someone that's just using creatine for a little bit of a mental effect, like a nootropic effect, you're probably not the kind of person that's watching this video too much, but I would recommend one and a half to two grams of creatine daily, just as a maintenance. You're not trying to increase muscle storage as much in the skeletal muscle tissue. You're just trying to have a shorter term nootropic sort of acute effect. Anyhow, as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. If you want to see more videos, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. See you tomorrow.